So if you've ever seen something like this, you think, well, what is it that's keeping it down? And what I mean by that is we have this little hook on here, and when I try to lift this, it pulls the whole entire table up. It really has a good firm fit. So stop the video and think, what is it that holds this down? And then let's discuss that whole entire topic. And it doesn't have to be just this type here. We also have another type. This is the kitchen version. You can go pick these up or you push in the center. And then it just holds the whole thing down. Like it's really hard to pull it back up. But on the other hand, if we grab it from the side and pull it up, it just comes up really easy. There's nothing at all holding it down. It's really simple. And the same thing with this one. We pull it from the side and there's no restriction whatsoever. But the problem is when I pull this way, it pulls the whole entire table up. So let's think about what's causing that to happen. And the big thing is it's atmospheric pressure. There is 14.7 pounds per square inch pushing down all the time. So every single square inch of this has 14.7 pounds pushing on it. So it's the weight of the air above us that's holding this down. Now this material is making a bit of a seal against the metal around it, so that pressure is pushing down. And when I'm trying to pull this up, the weight of the air is keeping it held down. The difference is, is when I pull on one of the edges, when I pull this edge right here, we have atmospheric pressure on both sides. So there's no pressure difference. So it comes up nice and easy. So some people think about this being a vacuum that holds this down, but really it's not a vacuum as much as it's just simply atmospheric pressure. So a vacuum is nothing more than a lack of atmospheric pressure. So here on the bottom side, underneath this, there is no atmospheric pressure, very little atmospheric pressure. And on the top side, there's 14.7. So when you try to pull this up, there's a pressure difference. There's less pressure in the bottom, more pressure in the top, and it's the atmospheric pressure holding this down. And essentially don't think of about a vacuum being a thing, it's a lack of a thing. It's lack of atmospheric pressure. So here we try to pull this, that 14.7 pounds every square inch. So when I'm trying to pull this up, nothing's able to work with me. However, if I pull it from the sides, there's now 14 on both sides, so there's no pressure difference and it comes up nice and easy. So we think about suction cups or things like this, it's a larger surface area. The bigger that cup is, the more square inches of space there is to push down to cause that pressure difference. And the smaller that area is, the less pounds per square inch of the atmospheric air there is to push against that. So it's all about atmospheric pressure. So we've talked a lot about atmospheric pressure and it's 14.7, 14.7 PSI pounds per every square inch. Remember that's only gonna be at sea level under standard atmospheric conditions. But here's a piece of pipe that's one inch by one inch we can say it weighs exactly one pound. This is the definition of one PSI. This is literally one PSI, but at sea level under standard atmospheric conditions, it's 14.7 PSI on us all the time. So imagine this being 14.7 times longer than what it is. That would be how much pressure is pushing down in every single square inch. So if we think about our mat that we have, 14.7 all the way across this on every single space. There's a lot of pressure pushing down on top of the square. So there's a lot of pressure keeping it down. Now we're not at sea level. So if I pull up my little handy tool, we're actually at 13.8 PSI right now. Atmospheric pressure right now in my studio is 13.8. So there's 13.8 pounds per square inch pushing on this mat at all times right now. Now, as we go higher in the altitude, we end up with less and less pressure pushing on every single part of this. So as we get up into the mountains or you go up into Colorado, anywhere at this high altitude, there's less pressure pushing down. As you go lower and lower in the atmosphere, you have more and more pressure. For example, Death Valley is below sea level, so you end up with greater than 14.7. You could even end up at 15 inches. Now, a lot of people just round the 15 to do math because it's easier, but I like to find out what is the atmospheric conditions you're working with and use that number because this would be much more relevant. If you're going to round to a number, I'd really rather round down to 14 because it's going to be much more accurate. As I travel the world and check these atmospheric conditions, I don't know that I've ever seen 15, but I see 14 and 13.8 pretty regularly. And then as we go higher in the atmosphere, of course, there's less and less pressure. But that's what it is, the atmospheric pressure pushing down. And a vacuum is nothing more than an absence or less than atmospheric condition. So we put that atmospheric pressure gauge inside of this vacuum chamber. So what we're gonna do is uh, zoom in so we can see the numbers. And let's pull a vacuum and see what happens.
As you can see here, we pulled down below atmospheric pressure. We didn't go that deep, but we still had about four PSI left into the chamber. But it's below atmospheric pressure. So here when I open this valve, we can hear the air rushing in. And you can see we're back to atmospheric pressure. So a vacuum isn't really a thing, it's a lack of a thing. In other words, a lack of atmospheric pressure. We reduce or remove atmospheric pressure and all that's left is a vacuum or a absence of pressure.